Welcome back again. We're doing another quick tip with another MVP expert, James Bartlett here. James, hello. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Thanks um, for having me, Mike. James, we're, 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 we've been playing around with notebooks. James and I are fascinated. We were just talking just before the video here, like, man, all these really cool things that we can do in notebooks now, we're excited about it. Like, there's, mm -hmm. there's so many things developing. Things are happening so quickly. That's why we're doing this series. We're doing a, a lot of quick tips around building things in notebooks. And we just learned today something really cool between DAX query view and connecting that with URL links that we can build through Semantic Link Labs. But we've been focusing our attention on Semantic Link Labs. With that, James, give us the story. What are we doing today? Yeah, yeah. So the user story here is you are a data engineer uh, or fa fabricator, if you will, uh, in sure. your organization. You have some people who are who want to know, oh, I, I just want to know how I can quickly look at certain parts of a model, but they yeah. don't really know how to write DAX, or maybe they know a little bit about writing DAX, but they don't know how to use DAX preview in the service here. And you really mm -hmm. just want to be able to give them, like you write a quick query for them, you provide it to them, and okay, well, if you wrote the query and you and you tested it yourself in DAX query view, you can say, all right, cool, I ran, uh, you know, they say, oh, I, I want to know gross sales and profit by country. Cool, I've got I've got that here. But what if I if I copy this to them and I paste that to them in Teams, they have to know where to go to put this in uh, in 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 their browser. Um, yes, and you know, they may not be able to bookmark it that way either. If they wanted to be able to quick, quickly get back to it anytime they want, there's no way yeah. to do that either. So exactly. Um, so there, there, there's a bit of a disconnect there. We would like to be able to provide that capability to them quickly uh, and, and allow them to kind of take it from there and, and maybe start making some of their own queries, that sort of thing. So um, and I'll add, yeah, I'll add one note here as well, James. We also know that when we're using DAX query view in the service, there's no ability for you to save the DAX query view. So you can't save it. So even though James is working here, he's in the service, he's editing the DAX or writing his own DAX statement in the service. When you leave, it's gone. You don't have the ability to keep this for later on. So this notebook right. will help us generate a very custom URL that will take us directly back. It'll go to DAX query view and land our very specific DAX query inside DAX query view. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go into the notebook. Let's explain. What do we need to set up yeah. in the notebook? Yeah, so we're going to go to the notebook here. And in the notebook, uh, first of all, uh, we have to install Semantic Link Labs. So Semantic Link Labs is the, um, is the, the uh, package that we need to be able to run this very specific function that will, allow, that will generate a custom URL that will, that will take that query that we've written and basically paste it automatically into a new Dex query view window for whoever yes. we give that link to. So, um, so to do that here, what this little percent sign here is, it means run this command as a shell command. And that, that's basically like your, your, as if it was a command terminal uh, in Windows or if it was uh, in Linux, it's a, like a bash shell, that sort of thing. That's actually what's going on here. So it says pip install semantic link labs. So we run that first. And it takes, a few it takes it like a couple of seconds. Now, also yep. note here too, um, some people have asked me about this. We are running this on a Python notebook, which yeah. this is a single core, single old, machine. Regular old Python. Yep, single, single machine. So that means we're not using like a, an array of machines. If you use Spark, you get like a driver and you get workers. This is a mm -hmm. single machine. Um, it's a little bit faster when you're running like simple operations like this. And you can see, yep, James, you're highlighting it there in the bottom corner. Mm -hmm. There is only two cores and it tells you how much RAM is being used on the machine. So yep. I, we yep. like using this for like testing purposes because the machine is very fast and you see three seconds, it installed the library. Easy. Okay, yep. moving on. Yep. All right, cool. So yeah, so next uh, we need to import senpai underscore labs as labs. And, and so we're just gonna do that real quick here. We'll go boop and run that. So and James and I were also trying to talk about this too. All semantic link labs, we can import it here. That's all right, sorry, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I was gonna say there's language of how Python works, right? So the first thing that we're talking about is a package. It's like a, a bundle of code. And then senpai labs is also a package. And then we use things like classes and we have functions in those classes called modules. Yeah, so I, again, methods. me learning Python, I'm trying to write the, r learn the right syntax. So we're, we're adding packages to our notebook. Yep. Yep. So, Excellent. so now that we've got, now that we've got the senpai labs uh, package, uh, installed and we've given it a little shortcut name here. This is like an alias, kind of like in yep. SQL where you, where you say, select this column and you give it a new alias and say, as blah, blah, blah. That's, that's sort of similar to what we were doing here. And it just gives yep. us a shorter, shorter way to refer to that uh, later on. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to build the query. And, you know, for earlier, we had this right here. We basically just copy from here and paste into this little 
box right here. And this is just, we're creating a variable. It says DAX query equals. And then uh, what this gives us the ability to create a multi, multi-line string. And it also allows us to put things like double quotes and single quotes within a single string without it breaking the string or having to put escape characters and things like that in there. So yeah. And right. then that's a very specific Python formatting. So I believe the F is for format string, right? right? And yep. so we're and the syntax of this is you need three quotations all at once. So it has mm -hmm. to be F for format yep. string and then quote, quote, quote. quote, quote. And then you can and basically drop whatever text you want in the middle and then mm -hmm. do quote, quote, quote again at the end to close yep. out that break. So that's just... One thing I've learned as a trick that this is very useful and you'll use this a lot. I love using this and, and it also makes it still very human readable as well. Yep, yep. Great, so we're gonna run that real quick and get that variable into our memory here. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So um, now uh, we actually wanna make sure before we go ahead and just create the URL and send it over to someone, we wanna make sure we didn't mess anything up when we were copy pasting that query over here. We wanna run the query ourselves, make sure yeah, it actually agree. gets the output we want. So yep. in order to do that, what we're going to do is there's actually a separate library um, called Senpai, which is Semantic Link. So earlier we were talking about Semantic Link Labs. Semantic Link Labs, you can kind of think as as being the like it's the the very cutting edge stuff that's that's it's brand new. There's it's um and it's not uh I think it's not officially supported by Microsoft, right? No, so, it's not. But sem but Semantic Link is officially supported yes. by Microsoft. So what Correct. we've done up to now was the unsupported stuff. We're gonna mix in a little bit of supported right now, just from we're gonna grab the um the fabric uh sub package from within the SemPy package here. And we're gonna we're gonna import that as SemFab. So we're just gonna do that real quick here. And then there is a metric. Actually, that might be a class. Fabric might be a class in this case, right? Am I getting that right? We're um, still figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to I'm, learn I'm this not, I don't have all the terminology exactly right. I think I've got it yes. kind of more or less mentally mapped in my head in terms of the hierarchy, but yeah. Yes, yes. So then we're going to say semfab. Now we're going to execute this method here, the evaluate DAX, uh, and we're going to we give it the workspace name. We give it the uh, the semantic model name or you know data set as the old school yep. uh, terminology for it. And we're going to say DAX yep. string equals DAX query. And that was the thing we had declared right up here earlier. Yes, all right. agree. So mm -hmm. we're going to say, all right, now that we've, we've done that, we're just going to execute this here, and we're going to have it just Boom. run that and go, okay, cool. This here matches what we saw when we ran it over here. Exactly. So now that we've looked at that and we said, okay, that is actually the, the query that I want to be able to, uh, for, the, for the person I'm going to share this link with, that's the query yes. I want them to be able to run. So yeah. now I'm going to say, oh, great, great. Let's go ahead and generate the query view URL that will allow them to get that exact query pasted automatically into a uh, into a new DAX query view window. So when I go down here and say labs.generate DAX query view URL, and then we're going to, again, give it the workspace name, the semantic mm -hmm. model name, and the DAX query um, string. And here we go. Boom. Now this creates this this URL here. Now this is what we'll go through the, the parts of this URL a little bit here, right? So the groups. Yeah. This is the workspace. That's the US workspace ID, right? Uh, yep. Then this takes us to the the specific model in that workspace. Then this is a little uh, little trick that's going on here. That you can basically you can add parameters to within the URL that basically tell Power BI what to do when it loads that page. So this yes. is kind of similar to what would happen if you sometimes you share a report with someone where you're actually sharing a specific uh, bookmark within that report where it takes them to that specific yeah. page or that or that bookmark within there. That's what, yes. kind of what this is doing here. What's happening here, all of this stuff here, this is actually mm -hmm. the that string from up here. That's this whole thing in base 64 encoded in like gzipped, I think, right? Isn't that yes, what you were saying correct. earlier? <laughs> yep, so that is right. That's what all that is doing there. So if I click on this link, it's actually going to open me a new tab and it's going to take that query and it's going to paste it into the DAX review. And all I got to do is hit the button to run it. So let's do that. So now this is a brand new browser window. It's not the original one. Yep, James will yep. sign so in here. I'm going to so, log in real quick here. And yep. it's authenticated. It's secure. And then it, boom, yep. takes you right into the app. And there we go. Bam. There it is. And I can click the run button. Ta -da. And get the results. How cool is so, that? Now, That's such a neat little feature. One thing I also want to point out here is that when we opened that in a new window, all of this stuff kind of disappears after that window loads. And so right. um, in order to, to share the link with someone, you can't click it first and then copy the, the URL from the URL bar. What you'll need to do is basically click and drag it somewhere. So I'm gonna click and drag it to my, this is my bookmark bar here. So I can open it in a new tab here. And you'll notice when I open it, you'll notice here's that big long string here. 
And then all of a sudden, once it finishes loading, this string is going to go away. Did you notice how it just yeah. disappeared there? Disappeared so on us, yeah. In order for me to share that with someone, I'm going to need to basically take this here and I'm going to have to click copy. And now I could paste it into a Teams message and send it to someone. Correct. So just a quick little note there that that, yep. that, that query doesn't doesn't go along with the, the uh, URL after you've clicked it. After you've opened and it. you can also, I think, right click on the link here directly below. So if you yeah, right click you on the link here, right click, copy link, and then enter two. There's yep. a couple ways you can get your way in. I think the, you know, and this this is also, you know, another story around this one as well is let's imagine you want to save a number of DAX queries or you want to keep them for later. Or so what you can do is you can copy your DAX query here. You can use this function to generate your URLs and you can bookmark a lot of DAX queries and that way all the queries would be saved in a list of bookmarks and you can just click on the bookmarks and directly go to, you know, you could have a folder that's called DAX queries, like James is building here. Hey, my cool DAX queries. And then you can just have all these links saved and then it will just immediately go to the model for you directly. Um, and I think James also, this is maybe a little bit weird here, but we have the GUID of the group and the model where mm -hmm. this lives. So if you imagine running the same DAX query on different places, you could effectively replace just the modeling or the workspace mm -hmm. and you could write the same dax query against multiple models in right. different workspaces if you right. needed to again yep. way more elaborate and and more thought out but you could start generating a series of links for people to kind of um programmatically build you these general queries that would land anywhere in any model for that matter so this is a programmatic way of yeah. injecting a single query. And the only part you really care about is the query portion at the end. That's what's trying to link to that exact text that you're generating for the query. Anyways, yeah. super cool hey, stuff. Hey, Mike, it uh, looks like we got a great comment from uh, from King Cat on YouTube here. Uh, yeah. Makes, allow you to basically do your unit tests in Python and save them to Dex Query View. Or not, not, you not, could. Really save, not really save them to Dex Query View, but you can run them in Dex Query View. Yes. It's a good way for you to share things like your unit tests with your team members without having to say, I'll, okay, take this DAX query, go paste it into a new DAX query window and 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 run it. Yes. You can just give them a link and it takes them straight there so there's no way they could ever get it wrong. <laughs> well, imagine imagine you're debugging something too, right? So maybe you're going through a model and like you've done a use it test or maybe you're using a notebook to kind of do some you know data analysis on a report. Well, what happens if you want to share that query with somebody else? Hey, I found something that's wrong here. Here's a a query that is actually showing you where the problem is in the data. Look, I can see that this record is coming in null or value or you know something doesn't look right here. You could essentially run that DAX query right through this process here and then share that link with somebody else. And that way you can then communicate to them directly through DAX query view. Hey, here's the link. Go check it out. And they can say, oh yeah, I can see the, I can see the problem there. Anyways, just some really cool things that are supported inside desktop. We want to thank you very much for checking out our quick tip. Yep. We hope you enjoyed this one. More coming on the way. James, thanks for the wonderful demo and finding thank this you feature. Mike. You're doing a good job on these things. Looking forward to doing more of these with you uh, in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.